I want to know more about jigsaw blocks. So I added them into my command block survival data pack. There we go. And we're going to try them out today. So the jigsaw recipe requires stairs. So I have some stairs already, but we're just going to make <laughs> we're just going to make a stack. And oh, I only have two command blocks. That's the one thing about this recipe. It requires a command block and let me just show you in case you don't remember. There's a recipe for command blocks in this data pack, and it requires a redstone block, which is really pricey, and the iron door is definitely <laughs> no small thing either. So, uh, yeah. Fortunately, last episode, we made a ton of them. Now, I don't think we're going to need like a full stack of jigsaw blocks, probably, but I do kind of want to try and like um, make a maze with them eventually. So we will probably need quite a few. I feel like we'll, we'll start with 17 and see how good that is. This is about to be some real dangerous experimenting that we're going to do. So we're going to fly away from our base and head over to this desert here and then we can start setting up shop. There's actually an area cleared out already. This is where I get my sand. At least I used to. So I have a little bit of head knowledge about this jigsaw block, but not a lot of experience. Uh, I'll show you what I know. So basically the jigsaw block is used for randomly generated structures. So like a woodland mansion or whatever. So let's say that we had each of these blocks is a room. Just imagine it's like a whole room. This, this room is like the treasure room. This one has like a bunch of mobs because it's red and dangerous. And this one is like just a pathway and then this is just like another pathway. So when the jigsaw block generates um, in, uh, in the GUI, there's like a generate button. It picks from these this pool of rooms. So you can see target pool. So it takes these as the target pool and then it just kind of starts placing them. So it's like, OK, we got this this hallway. We'll put another hallway. We'll, we'll put a treasure room. Maybe some more hallways, stick another treasure room on top of that. Ooh, we got a dangerous mob area and then some more hallways. And so one uh, jigsaw block can make like an entire structure like this. And the second, like if you generate it another time, it's going to be different. So if you generate it a second time, then maybe you get one of these, one of these and then like three treasure rooms or something and you get super lucky and then there's like not even any of the the boss mob areas like this one. So that's kind of why it's so cool is you can randomly generate structures based on a target pool of rooms. So if I understand this correctly, the first thing that we need to do is make those rooms. Um, we need to make a couple of individual rooms and then we'll be able to save those and generate them with the jigsaw block. So let's swap this to save and just name this maze one should detect. Yeah. So now we got a little area that we can build our room in. <laughs> the turtle is just barely out outside. So we'll just make something really basic. Uh, I'll make like a little pathway that has two entrances and exits. And I think that that's going to be kind of the key is multiple entrances and exits. So we have a little L-shaped pattern here, but it's not symmetrical. And that's important because when we're copying it over, I want to see like how it gets copied over. So these, these basalt blocks, they're facing this way. And one of them is facing the correct direction. But this one here is like sideways because I, I placed it like that. Um, and then over here, this one is sideways. And then this one, see how it's like it's like on the left side. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, we'll put a torch here on top to kind of like have a little bit of asymmetry there as well. And then this is the part that I don't really know how it works. Um, but we're going to do it anyway, see what happens. So you have to place jigsaw blocks on the parts that you want it to connect to. So clearly we would want the path to keep going this way. So we'll put a jigsaw block um, here. I assume the arrow is facing the wrong direction. Do you need to place it against a block, maybe? Like that? Ooh, yeah, OK. So that looks like it's going the right direction. So let's just do the same thing over here. Like that. 
And now we have a little dumb room. <laughs> uh, but hopefully it will be illustrative. All right, so this is our second room. It has a straight hallway that goes through and then there's like this lump of gold or treasure that's like on the side. So that might be kind of cool, you know, if you were going through a, a dungeon or something, it's like, oh, there's some goodies here. So now we're going to place the um, jigsaw blocks again, but this time I'm going to place one of them uh, the reverse of how we placed it over here. So we placed it against the block, so it's like pointing out, but then now I'm going to make it point inward just in case we placed all the other ones in the wrong direction. And this way, you know, if this side doesn't generate properly, so we'll mark it with a torch. If this side doesn't doesn't generate properly, we'll know that this is the correct direction. And if this side doesn't generate properly and this one does, then we'll know this is the correct direction. So you kind of get the drift. Anyway, um, that's our second maze room. And so we should actually, let's save it. Boom. We should actually be able to try out the jigsaw blocks now. <laughs> so... Even though we're already far away from our base, we have stuff in here that I don't want to destroy. So we're gonna we're gonna go even farther, <laughs> just a little bit to uh, try out this jigsaw block here. So we have a specified target pool. Oh, we gotta place a block, I guess. And then we can put the target pool in here. Okay, so I'm leaving two of these empty because I don't quite understand what they do. This one, I'm pretty sure I know what, what it does. So I put the maze uh, structures that we saved. I had to actually physically move them in the folders, like in Windows. Um, but they're there now. So if we hit generate. Whoa, look at that. You guys see it? No, okay, there's nothing there. Hmm. What if we name this one maze one and then name this one maze two? Is that, is it like that? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe we should put this levels to one. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Hmm. There's no error codes. If there's some structure that's getting spawned in some random place. <laughs> hmm. So I've had a thought and it is what I would call an extremely dangerous thought. Um, <laughs> We're going to try it, but we need to go a little farther away. <laughs> okay, so Minecraft has some built-in structures that we can use. So we can just test it with those before we make our own, I guess. Or before we refine our own, because we already made some. But I think if we don't specify this target pool, it's going to pick from the, the targets that already exist. So if we change this maybe to levels 1... No, okay, so we must need this name here, then, I'm going to guess. Oh, I finally found one. <laughs> okay, wow, that's something. Um, here, let's load it in. So this is an actual structure that Minecraft uses to generate uh like villages and stuff so we can actually see how these junction blocks are supposed to work oh look at this turns into minecraft oak fence you see how there's like a fence thing going through it like um yeah so this once it's all done this turns into an oak fence so i get this now name minecraft building entrance target name oh so these are like generic names that you can use to like group certain things together okay i think i get that let's look at another structure we'll just overwrite this one so this is another room that minecraft uses to generate villages let's load it yeah it's prepared okay and load it for real oh <laughs> it left part of the house so this should be pretty informative yeah, look at this. So there's jigsaw blocks in the ground, and it looks like they're facing upwards. Yeah, yeah, name Minecraft bottom. So you can probably, I bet you that there are like lamps that connect to that specific name. And yeah, okay, that's really interesting. I think I get that now. 
let's check the name. Yeah, Minecraft Building Entrance. So Building Entrance is like what it uses for all the roads. And then Minecraft Bottom, I guess, is what it uses for like lampposts and stuff. So the other important thing that I noticed is the, <laughs> the jigsaw blocks in, in the actual like rooms, all these things are filled out. So we're going to need to fill these out with correct things. So we can just probably name this as Minecraft, or actually let's do talent so it doesn't get mixed up. And this could just be walkway. Okay, that's the last one. So now we just got to resave these. That one, and then this one. So I think I'm starting to get it. You can't just place a jigsaw block and not specify what it has to connect to. You have to tell it like what piece it's connecting to. So, so far the only piece that we've defined is this Talon walkway. And so once we put the Talon walkway in there, we should be able to generate, hmm. That definitely should have worked. Let's try level one. No? Level one. Okay, no. This should be right. What? <laughs> no? Again? Why must you be so difficult? I kid you not, I spent three and a half hours working on this last night. Uh, and I don't know exactly what was wrong, but I think it works now. <laughs> um, I couldn't duplicate the error, but yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, put it on level one, which should just generate one walkway or maybe two. So it's actually kind of interesting, right? This didn't have anything associated with it, but when it generated this structure, this structure in return generated this one. So it like doubled back on itself, which is kind of cool. Um, so we got another L structure. We got the treasure room too. And you can kind of see how the random generation works, right? Because there's two of these and then there's only one of these. Um, <laughs> now we're going to try this backwards one. Does this like just destroy everything? Also, can we generate it with just zero? Oh, we can. Oh, so it just overwrites because this is the part of the treasure room and then we got the L-shaped walkway again. So that's interesting. Um, I guess we probably wouldn't want one that doubles back normally unless we had some really advanced stuff going on, but that's pretty cool. We can just generate one and we could actually regenerate too, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> cool. So. Now that we know that it works, now we can start fiddling around with these structures and do some kind of cool stuff. Particularly, I want to try and put entities. <laughs> he looked up as soon as I said that. Yeah, so we'll try uh, sticking a turtle in here. So first, we're going to see how they're stored in default Minecraft. So we can just go to load. Let me type this in. So we should probably make sure to include entities and then let's just hit load to see how big this is. Okay, so it's just kind of like a small little box. Oh, what? Oh, it's a jigsaw block with two cows. Okay, I think I get it though. They just, it's like a regular structure, but you don't put blocks in it except for the jigsaw block. Oh yeah, this is the same. Okay, okay, I get it. All right, so we got the dancing turtle here. <laughs> um, I think we'll just stick a jigsaw block right here. Sure. And then we'll have to do some finagling with the structure block to get it in the right place, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, the turtle is going to connect to Talon walkway. Um, we're not going to make a bunch of connectors so it doesn't get too confusing yet, but <laughs> that, that's kind of funny. All right, let's see if we can get the turtle. Go two again. Uh-oh. I'll save you, turtle. <laughs> cool. I don't know how two turtles spawned. I think it kind of like generated one like this and then another like that. It like doubled back on itself. Cool, though. We can generate entities now. No problem.
All right, we're gonna keep pushing the jigsaw blocks to their limits. I have some redstone here and we're gonna see how the redstone, whether or not like it can hold its state. So like a comparator here, if we just stick a comparator there, there's two states, right? You can go into addition mode or subtract mode. Now, if these jigsaw blocks are all that they're cracked up to be, it should be able to hold that subtract mode. So that would mean if we stick a lever here and we spam some redstone, turn the lever on, we got a little bit of a clock here. So I, <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, they're all in like an on state. It's not really able to save. Wait. This one like updated somehow. It's actually kind of flickering on and off. Oh, weird. So maybe as the blocks just randomly update, the, uh, the clock can actually turn on. Just as I was sitting there looking at the maze, I had an idea. There might be a way that we can update redstone without being really too crazy. So all we really need to do is just make it so that the jigsaw block is right next to whatever we want to update it. And then when the jigsaw block turns into something, so like if we have the jigsaw block turned into this assault thing, then it would update the lever or the comparator or whatever we want to update and hopefully work. So rather than turn into air, these jigsaw blocks are gonna turn into basalt. I don't know if the explanation before was very clear. Um, and I made it so that, see how it's like Minecraft basalt and then there's like this axis thing. Um, that is like X, Y, or Z, what axis it will be facing. Now, this will probably be different every time it turns. So I did want to try one that doesn't have anything. So we'll mark the special ones with a purple block. Oh, interesting. It just placed the basalt straight up and down. Yeah, I was wondering how it would deal with that. This is the correct direction. That's the correct direction. That's the correct direction. Neither of those are the correct direction. This one... Oh, wait. This is turned, but it still kept the same direction. Oh, that's cool. It calculates... Yeah, this should be facing... Here, let me show you. Uh... This block right here should be facing this way, I think. But it was facing the correct direction, this way. That is so cool and really smart. That's some cool logic. So now that we know that the jigsaw block will rotate everything properly, we can just copy all of the states of this lever. The, the states, by the way, are over here. So see how it says face, floor. That means that the face of the lever is on the floor. Facing, it's facing west. Powered is true. So that means it's on. Um, and so we'll just copy all that into the jigsaw. All out of jigsaw blocks. It was bound to happen. Here we go. Let's, let's make some more. All right, let's see if there's nothing in the way, if that changes anything. Oh, maybe it does. Because this is just straight up working. So if there's no blocks to replace, it always updates. Okay, okay. So if you're replacing over a block, then it kind of has some trouble. But otherwise, it seems to be okay. That's cool. So I think we're ready to move on to more full permanent maze rooms now. So I, I updated these two and we're going to make two more over there, but I'm just going to give you a quick little glance. So we got the lamp. I moved it slightly so that the updating should all be good now. I also removed the treasure from this area. So this is literally just a straight walkway now. It does have um, the comparator clock, which will turn those lamps on that are in the corner. So some lamps will probably be on and some lamps won't. And then we're going to make a treasure room which is this and then we're gonna make a boss like boss mob room or maybe just you know like a zombie or something <laughs> but before we get to the boss room let's start with this treasure room the actual treasure room here so i updated it so that it is three wide entrances now like that and then we would have um the pathway would kind of come in here and then all the loot and whatever would be here 
So we're also going to add some redstone here. Um, we will just do like a straight line and then we're going to stick a redstone lamp in the ceiling and then just some power or a block so that power will pass through to the lamp, assuming that this side is powered. So for the treasure part of the room, I actually kind of closed off this front area a little bit. Um, so instead of a three wide, there's just a one wide. So you can't really see what you're getting into. And then inside here, we'll put a bunch of this nether gold ore. And then also, you'll, I think we'll just put a little bit here. And we'll put this chest right in the corner with some broken uh, feather falling boots. I'm kind of curious like how it will handle a block that has data in it. If it will just keep it as normal or what's going to happen there. And then we'll just kind of do something like this. Or maybe this so you almost can't see it how well can you see it from here Ooh, perfect you can only you can only see the stuff that's straight in front of you so we might actually get rid of this so it's just like super hidden it's like what 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 is that yeah perfect so i decided to make the boss room be a kind of a crossroads and there's no boss mob in here right now i'm actually going to keep that a secret until the maze is generated just for a little bit of added suspense. Um, but yeah, the boss mob will spawn on top of this block, at least some of the time. I don't know if it'll be 100% of the time, but some of the time. And it'll just be a pretty simple crossroady type room. There's a jigsaw block for every direction, so it, it could theoretically generate a pretty big maze. <laughs> so that'll be cool. And as a final touch, I'm putting some iron bars here, and then I think I'm gonna close it off for some directions. Oops. I don't want it to connect to a block. So we'll maybe have like um, one closed off there, one closed off there. And yeah, we'll just leave two open. Or better yet, actually, if we just close all of them off, then it's kind of like a, a cage. That would be cool, I think. Yeah. And then maybe there's some little opening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I like this. This is better. Just in case everything goes wrong. I'm just gonna make a backup. Alright, here we go. Moment of truth. <laughs> I'm going quite a ways away from our little spot there because I think this has the potential of being the biggest maze that we've auto-generated so far. So, yeah. Um, here should probably be good. Maybe, maybe like right in here. Because it's all covered, so we'll be able to like go through it like a tunnel and stuff. It should be pretty cool. All right, so let me enter the data. <laughs> okay. Level seven. Keep jigsaws off. Oh boy. Well, this is a pretty spectacular maze. What do you think? I think it's gorgeous. So, um, these turtles, these are the entrances and the exit of the dungeon. Clearly, they're not supposed to happen this much um, because they actually will terminate the dungeon. So it like it stops generating once it gets to there. And apparently we managed to generate one on both sides immediately. So here, okay, okay. I'll adjust the weight of it and that should fix it. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> uh, everything should be fixed now, so. Here we go. Level seven, keep jigsaws off. Oh. There are many turtles taking damage. Oh look, here's the entrance. <gasps> that is way too many boss rooms. <laughs> yeah, look at this boss. We made this boss mob uh, quite a few episodes ago. <laughs> oh, he drops swords. He's pretty strong, so... Oh, wow. If he hits me... Oh, my! <laughs> He's really strong. He's dual-wielding swords. Oops, I hit the turtle. Man, it takes so many hits to kill him. Yeah, look at this, though. We got, like, a full maze here. And a lot of bosses. <laughs> Whoa, this is cool. Oh, yeah, there's an entrance. Okay, so we would probably want to refine... Oh, it's a treasure room! Oh, that's so cool! 
Oh, yep, it kept all the durability and the enchantment. Oh my goodness. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, wow. This is awesome. Wait, did we even get any, like, pathway ones? <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's fine. We saw all the pathway stuff from before, so. Oh, wait, hang on. There's more. There's more dungeon. It's so cool. Oh, weird. So this is an entrance. This is supposed to have a turtle in it. The turtle probably suffocated. And then it got stopped. Yeah, by this wall. Oh, that's so cool. Dude, how big is this dungeon? Oh my. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, this is the normal. This is the normal walkway. The one walkway we're not getting is the straight one. Although, honestly, if I got it, I probably wouldn't have noticed because it's just so natural. That's actually really cool. He doesn't drop a diamond sword every time. Oh, and it's broken too. Wow. I just uh, borrowed some uh, code that I had made earlier. Apparently, it still works just fine. Oh! <gasps> He drops enchanted gear. Projectile protection X. Hmm, I'm not sure if he's supposed to drop that. That seems a little overpowered. <laughs> we can chuck that. Oh, here's another. Oh no, a dead turtle. I still don't see any straight areas, which would be what would turn on the lights. So it's a little awkward. Oh, it's a regular zombie. The the boss mob, he can actually summon zombies to his aid. And he does it at a, a higher rate than normal zombies. So he's like, he can build a, like a, a big horde. If you fight him out in the wild, um, which I haven't done in a long time, but if you fight him out in the wild, he starts like, he gets so many zombies, like just running to his aid. It's, it's ridiculous and frightening. Because they all have knockback resistance, like him. And it's just, it's something else. You know, this might be the straight walkway. Actually, if we break this... Yeah, this is the straight walkway. Yeah, see, it's so, like, you don't even notice it. Yeah, because there's the comparator. The comparator is only under the straight walkway. That's so cool. Oh my word, <laughs> this is awesome. Oh yeah, this is another straight walkway. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh man, that is so cool. I'm really glad we got to try out the structure blocks. This this dungeon that it generated, this is like a legit dungeon. I mean, we could refine it still, you know, and change when, uh, like how often treasure rooms spawn and like, there, there's all, all kinds of things that we can do to tweak it and improve it, but like the basic functionality of creating a bunch of rooms in random order and just making like... Dude, the, it's just so cool. I can't believe it. And like the amount of work it would have taken to build one of these things would have taken so much longer, but we just had to build individual rooms and now we can just spawn... We can just spawn one whenever we want, you know, if we want to make a harder dungeon say and or give those guys like speed and they can like run around and hurt us or whatever like we have a lot of options so that's super cool but i think i'm going to call it here um i hope you enjoyed this exploration of the jigsaw block and oh 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 oh! i was i almost forgot i'm actually intending to make a jigsaw tutorial sometime in the future so i'll because like when I was looking up stuff, I could not find information on this block. And I feel like it's a block that a lot of people want to know about. So um, yeah, <laughs> once I get all of the information and stuff that we learned in this episode organized, I'll probably make one. So it'll be sometime in the future. Uh, but yeah, that'll, that'll be it for me for this episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this very weird and unique episode. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed playing, so... Yeah, I hope that came through. But yeah, that's that's it for me. So I'll catch you next time. Later.